Hello everybody, I'm Ranger Rachel at Hunting Island State Park. Many of our parks have excellent spots for some fishing, including this pier behind me. As summer rolls in and the weather gets better, we're going to start and see more people fishing out on our pier. And with that, I wanted to talk about a fish that I personally feel is a little bit underappreciated. Now I've set a trap a little further down the pier, so let's walk out and see if we've caught any. I'll give you a few clues to help you guess which fish I'm talking about. Firstly, the natural range of this fish is the Atlantic coast from Canada down to Florida, but it's also been introduced to Hawaii, the Philippines, and the Atlantic coasts of Spain and Portugal. Secondly, the native name for this fish comes from an Algonquin word that means going in crowds, a reflection of their tendency to swim in large groups. This behavior is also called shoaling or schooling. Lastly, these fish are not in the same family as true minnows, but many people call them mud, marsh, or saltwater minnows. Have you guessed yet? We're talking about mummy chogs, or Atlantic killifish. These little fish are a popular bait fish, but what else do you know about them? Carl Linnaeus first described mummy chogs in Charleston, South Carolina in 1766. They're not large fish, maxing out at about six inches long, and they can appear different colors but tend towards an olive green top with a white belly and dotted vertical lines down the body. This color pattern is an adaptation that helps protect mummy chogs from predators. From the top, they blend in with the mud, and from below, they look like the sky. Mummy chogs are known for their resiliency. Living in tidal ecosystems means a lot of changes can happen in a short period of time, and they need to be able to handle those. Rapid temperature changes, low oxygen levels, and salinities ranging from completely fresh water to 100 parts per thousand are just a few things these fish have adapted to survive. Their resiliency and abundance have made these fish popular subjects for scientific study. Mummy chogs have been used in studies on stress, pollution, circadian rhythms, and even cancer. They were also the first fish sent into space. Two fish and 50 eggs went aboard Skylab in 1973 to see how they would react in zero gravity. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope you learned a little bit more about our little fish friends, and now I'm going to return them to this tidal creek behind me so that they can go on living their lives and we can go on living ours. Hope to see you out in the park someday.